What is going on guys? This is Gaines Gaming. Today we are talking about the three best investments you can make in Rise of Kingdoms as a free to play player. Now, this is a topic that I think is very, very relevant for a lot of people because most people do not spend in Rise of Kingdoms. So we're talking about the three best commanders that you can put your gold heads into in 2024, going into 2025 here soon, that will get you the best bang for your buck and allow you to save sculptures in the future. If you guys are new here, this is Gaines Gaming. We make Rise of Kingdoms content and we are a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. So if you're not yet subscribed, do me a favor and drop a subscribe and a like down below. This is completely free to play for you. So now talking about free to play players, you guys are the backbone of Rise of Kingdoms. So I wanna make sure you have the best ability to fight in the open field because obviously you need every advantage you can get. So in my opinion, the number one commander that you should be investing into in 2024 is 100% Luce. The reason why Luce is so freaking good is because he pairs with so many different commanders and literally every single commander that you put with Luce is going to do phenomenal. You could put City Keeper with Luce and still trade very, very well. That is how good Luce is in the open field. Now, when it comes to Luce, I certainly recommend that you do expertise him. In my opinion, his expertise is 100% worth it. And he is probably the commander that is going to give you the best longevity in the game because I honestly do not see how anybody could replace him in the future with his five target AOE, 2250 damage factor, as well as reducing March speed. I mean, you can't do much better than that. Even in 2025, I don't think they'll do much better than Luce. So Luce should 100% be your number one priority win coming into Season of Conquest. You will be able to unlock him right when you enter KVK3 on the Wheel of Fortune. So I certainly recommend that when you get to Season of Conquest, you are saving up your gems to be able to spin the wheel to get commanders unlocked. Now, obviously when you're in KVK1 and KVK2, you have a bunch of different commanders you can invest into. If you are somebody that invests into Alexander the Great, which I've made plenty of videos on him in the past, if you do invest in Alexander the Great, even if it's only to 5511, he is going to be a phenomenal pairing with Luce. In my opinion, this is honestly one of the best pairings in the game, Luce and Alexander the Great. And a lot of people in KVK2 invest into Alexander the Great because they want a great KVK2 commander that is still usable in Season of Conquest. And the nice thing about Alexander the Great as well is that he was recently added to the museum. And so the museum is for Season of Conquest. And with Alexander the Great, Obviously, this isn't phenomenal, but it's better than nothing. He's getting an additional 20% infantry defense and 6% normal damage reduction, which, you know, is better than nothing, like I said. But that Luce and Alex pairing, even if Alex is 5511, that is still going to be very, very good. Now, there are other pairings you can run with Luce that are also free to play. You know, you can run Charles Martel. Charles Martel, obviously not going to be the best situation for Luce, but it's still going to be a very, very good pairing. Now, another commander that I would put in the top priority list for investing into is Scipio Prime. Now, the reason why I'm putting two infantry commanders on this list is because, in my opinion, infantry is the best troop type for free-to-play players. And Scipio and Luce pair phenomenally together. I would put Scipio as the primary and Luce as the secondary if you are going to run this pairing. But if you run it to run two different pairings for your infantry, you could then run Scipio Prime and Metmed as your secondary to Scipio, and then run your Luce with Charles Martel or Luce with Alexander the Great. That will give you two different infantry pairings you can use in the open field. Now with free to play players, I do not recommend running more than three marches in the open field to start with. Obviously you can eventually get to that point, but personally I think less is more because as a free to play player, obviously investing into equipment and armaments is gonna be much more difficult. And so if you are able to focus on just a couple of marches first and get those marches to be very, very good, rather than trying to invest into five different marches and all being so-so, you're going to have much better trades in the open field. Now, obviously, yes, you can get more kills with more marches, but the more marches you have, the worse trades you are going to take. Because first of all, running five marches in the open field is a lot more difficult than it looks. And in my opinion, like when I went from three to four marches, it wasn't a huge deal. When I went from four to five, I noticed how much more difficult it was because when you were fighting in the open field, say this barbarian is the enemy right here. When you come with three marches, your three marches are basically like right on this tree line right here. And say this is the enemy murder ball, this other barbarian. And your three marches are attacking right here in perfect position. Once you put four marches in, you have another march that comes right here. 
And when you put a fifth march in, you have another march that wraps all the way around. And all of a sudden you are basically surrounding this march, but your other two units here are just getting absolutely decimated and your other three are doing very, very well. That's the reality of running more than three marches in the open field is that the positioning that you take, even if you're very good at positioning, your marches are going to wrap around and go right into the murder ball and get completely wrecked by AOE or get targeted by the enemy and then get white. So that is why I recommend that free to play players focus on two or three marches rather than trying to get five marches in the open field, because not only is it expensive, it's much more difficult to fight with more than three marches. Now, the third commander I would recommend focusing on, I'm actually going to give you two different options. The reason why is because you can run either archers or you can run caps. And in my opinion, if you're going to choose archers, I would go for Zhuge Liang. Now, obviously, as a free to play player, you might still want to be going for YSG. Personally, I would recommend skipping YSG and going straight for Zhuge. Now, could you run them together? Yes but you're gonna be missing out on a ton of March speed. So that is why I would recommend focusing more on Zuge rather than YSG, because with Zuge, you're automatically getting that five target AOE versus with YSG, you have to fully expertise him to get that five March AOE. Now, the circular AOE is phenomenal, and it's also very good for barb chaining, which as a free-to-play player, the advantage that you can get is the amount of time that you can play the game. And so if you're using Zuge for barb chaining, you're able to kill a lot of barbarians. And so I would highly recommend focusing on Zuge to be able to AOE barb chain as well with Richard as your secondary because Zuge Liang, he can also get reduced AP reduction. So that way you can barb chain even more and spend less AP. But when it comes to the open field, he is still very, very, very strong. And so when you're able to get this amount of AOE damage, you're going to get a lot more kills in the open field. Now, what are some pairings for Zuge as a free to play player? Well, honestly, you have a couple of different options. I know that some people, like I said, like to run YSG as a secondary. Some people want to invest into another Archer Commander down the road and invest into Herman Prime, which I think is a great idea. But honestly, one commander that people don't really talk about that I think could actually be really good is Mehmed. And the reason why is because he is going to boost your skill damage a ton. And when you boost that skill damage and then you also get to Season of Conquest and you unlock the museum, you are able to boost even more skill damage with Mehmed. You are able to get an additional 10% skill damage and 30% health, which is phenomenal. So if you're able to do that and pair that with your Zuge in the meantime, that is a great idea. And then eventually invest into that second Archer Commander, whether that is going to be YSG or whether that's going to be Herman Prime. I'd recommend Herman Prime over YSG 100%, but that's one thing you could do. Now, the third commander, like I said, is kind of tied with Zuge, is going to be Joan Prime. Now, some people might ask, well, why not Hugh? Why not Nevsky? The reason why is because, in my opinion, Joan Prime is what makes those two commanders so, so, so good paired with her. She is the best cavalry commander in the game, in my opinion. I think if you're going to run one of the three, you're going to run Joan of Arc Prime. And the pairings that you can run with Joan of Arc, like I said, is pretty crazy. You can run just about anybody with Joan of Arc and do very, very well. In my opinion, the best budget march to run with Joan of Arc is again, Metmed. Metmed and Joan of Arc Prime are actually very similar commanders. When I first unlocked Joan of Arc, before using her, I used Nevsky and Metmed and it did very, very well. Then I replaced that Metmed with Joan of Arc and it did even better. But you can run Joan of Arc and Metmed and do an insane amount of skill damage and one of the best things about Joan of Arc is you don't even have to expertise her. If you can get her to 5115, that is really I mean, not obviously 100% of her power, but you're getting like 70 to 80% there for a very small investment. Now, obviously, getting to 5115 is difficult. You might have to use a ton of skill resets, and those are hard to come by as a free to play player. So it's a little bit more difficult. You have to get lucky, but you know, using the locks, getting that first skill to 5 and then trying to get lucky with that four skill, that is what you need to do because you need this probability to 100%. That is what you're looking for because basically that's gonna get you a second active skill every 10 seconds, which is crazy, crazy strong. So if you can get Joan of Arc Prime to 5115, that is a great budget march for her. But obviously, expertising her in the long run is gonna be a great idea as well, and in my opinion, it definitely worth the sculptures. And so again, just to recap, the number one investment is going to be Luce. The number two is going to be Scipio. And then tied for number three, in my opinion, is going to be Zhu Liang and Joan of Arc Prime, depending on whether you want to run archers or run cavalry. Personally, as someone that was a free-to-play player for a very long time, 
I would definitely recommend focusing more on calves than archers. Even though you can do a little more damage with archers with the AoE, in my opinion, the extra mark speed you get from running calves is far greater than running the archer set. But the benefit you get from archers is that the gear you can run with it is much easier to get because the revival set is very, very, very good and honestly one of the best purple sets in the game. So that is why archers are really good for free to play. But in my opinion, I don't think that overruns the march speed you get from running cavalry and also just the trades you're going to get from running cavalry instead of archers because archers are a top priority target versus cavalry are less of a priority target let me know what you guys think down below what you would recommend for the top three investments for free-to-play players like i said personally i think infantry is the best troop type for free-to-play it's the easiest to unlock and in my opinion it's just the most free-to-play friendly coming from a former free-to-play infantry main so let me know what you guys think down below and have a great rest of your day